first thing I want to see if I want to see if we can find that hang clean because that's going to be ridiculous. <sighs> Tristan Wirfs on his Iowa weightlifting record and NFL draft process. Okay. Now uh, I'm watching you on the screen right here. Uh, Bro. Putting up over six foot six, 145 kg. Look at the, look at it. Look at that shit. Look at everyone in the background. <laughs> this guy's fucking a foot off the air, mate. Hey, what's up everyone? What is going on? And welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Jacob and I am a rugby player giving my reaction to American football. Now, for any of you American football fans out there that haven't watched rugby before, well, you should probably see some similarities. And look, if you do want a bit of a rundown on some of the skills, some of the, I guess, the nuances of the game, definitely go back into my uh, video library titled Rugby Related Videos. And if you can't find what you're looking for there, hit me up on Instagram, underscore Jacob McDonald. Now, I've been doing this series called Rugby Player Reacts for, for two years now. And uh, well, I'm not stopping anytime soon. I had the pleasure of following my second ever uh, combine and then the draft. And there was definitely certain players that stood out to me for different reasons. Certain players in different positions for different reasons. And that's exactly what happened the year before. There was one player, one player only, that, that really stood out to me the year before and, and got pushed down to the second uh, round, unbelievably to me. And that guy was DK Metcalf. Now, there's another player in that category, although I haven't actually seen their highlights yet, but we're, we're going to do that eventually in this video series, and that's Jonathan Taylor. He got put down, I mean, he was probably, shit, I think he was the third running back off the block and was down at pick number 42. The first running back of the draft went the 32nd pick to Super Bowl champions, Kansas City Chiefs. Now, if Jonathan Taylor was the top running back in the class, surely they would have picked him, and he would have been landing on a Super Bowl team. Lo and behold, he went to the Colts. One exciting thing is that the Colts are playing the Jaguars in the first game of the season, and the Jaguars are my favorite team. But we're not talking about either of those teams today. Today we're talking about Tristan Wirfs. Tristan Wirfs came across my screen at the Combine for the very first time, and uh, I think my mouth hit the floor. In fact, right now I'm going to show you exactly what my reaction was when I first saw him. From Iowa, you see the Raj up here, 10-1. That's as good as we've seen. Wow. For an offensive lineman. How about the vertical jump? Oh, yeah, oh good my from an offensive lineman. God. 36 and a half. Tristan Wirfs, 36 and a half. No. 20... <laughs> 190... Sorry, 145 kilograms, six foot five. 145 kgs just jumped 36 and a half inches. Let's watch that again. You think about a bar in the gym, okay? You put one plate aside. You put two plates aside. You put three plates aside. And then you put a quarter on each side as well. And then you put the lockers on, okay? That is how heavy this man is. We've ever seen... Offensive lineman. How about the vertical jump? Wow. Oh, yeah. So to me, you know, I wouldn't call myself uneducated, but I'd probably say half educated. Uh, Tristan Wirfs definitely stood out to me. His size for a start, but also his ability to move. If I'm remembering correctly, at, at 320 pounds and six foot five, he had a 36 inch vertical. And to actually see that in person is absolutely ridiculous now let's have a look wow yeah swear to god i'm with it i don't see nobody in my lane is quite go get it like me wow please don't be wasting my time with that business who are you kidding man yeah 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 tristan wirfs was born january 24th 1999 he's six foot five or 196 centimeters, 320 pounds, or 145 kg, which is uh, basically a fridge. Wirfs played high school football at Mount Vernon High School, where he also excelled in wrestling and track and field. He won the state discus throw as a sophomore, and Iowa State and Iowa Hawkeyes both offered Wirfs scholarships within the next month. He committed to Iowa in winter of his junior year in December 2015 and was a four-star recruit. During his senior year of high school, Wirfs helped Mount Vernon to a state semi-final appearance in football, was named an Army All-American for football, won a state wrestling title in winter, and won the discus for the third straight year and shot put for the second straight year. 
He was honored by Des Moines Register as the best boys prep athlete in the state. So this guy, <laughs> this guy was destined to do something physical. As a true freshman, Wirth started seven games at right tackle, becoming the first true freshman to start at offensive tackle in the Kirk Ferentz era. So that must be the coach of Iowa. And he's held it since the 1999 season. Through the season, he worked on being more aggressive against defenders. Before his sophomore season, Wirfs was suspended for the season opening game against North Illinois for an OWI arrest. What's that? Driving under the influence. Oh, no. After his sophomore season, Wirfs broke the Hawkeyes' hang clean record by Brandon Scherf, setting a new mark at 450 pounds. He also said a focus of his junior season would be to translate his weight room exploits to the field. Oh, that's fucking exciting. An injury during spring practice caused him to miss a few weeks of practice. Following his junior season, where he was selected to the first team All Big Ten and named the Conference Lineman of the Year, once again, as expected, he announced that he would forego his final season and enter the draft. So at the combine, he's measured at six foot four and seven eighths of an inch, 320 pounds, a 34 inch arm length, 10 and a quarter inches hand size, which is, I think that's probably the biggest one I've seen so far. A uh, 40 yard dash of 485. That is faster. Look, I think I. I think I did see something. It rings a bell. I believe, actually, no, this is, this is absolutely true. He's playing for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tom Brady's left tackle is going to be able to run faster than Tom Brady. Does that make sense? I don't know, but it's pretty exciting. So we've got a 485 dash, a 468 20 yard shuttle, a, three, a 765 three cone drill, vertical jump, like I said, of 36.5 inches, 10 foot one inch broad jump, and 24 reps on the bench. Ugh, that is just... That is just ridiculous. Absolutely, I cannot wait to see this guy play. Holy shit. Um, wow. You know what? There's one other left tackle that, that is of this size, even bigger, and has just as impressive movement. And um, he's actually from Australia. His name's um, Jordan Mailata. And I'm just hoping that after two years in the league that he can actually start you know, playing games for the Jets. And we can really get behind him back here in uh, New Zealand and Australia. But with that being said, Let's continue, but the first thing I want to see if I want to see if we can find that hang clean Because that's gonna be ridiculous <sighs> Tristan Wirfs on his Iowa weightlifting record and NFL draft process Okay Now uh, I'm watching you on the screen right here uh, Bro putting up over Six foot six, 145 kg Look at the, look at it, look at that shit, look at everyone in the background <laughs> this guy's fucking a foot off the air, mate. That is the kind of that's the kind of energy that's that's in a room like that. You know, when when someone is shifting, when someone of that stature is shifting that amount of weight, it is like, I mean, you know what? I've never seen it, so I don't know what it'd be like. But incredible. Hundred pounds. What in the world is that like? I mean, when you, what, I, I, I honestly am trying to put myself in your shoes with that feet that we're seeing on on the screen yeah. from Hawkeye football. Yeah, that was a pretty, that was a pretty surreal moment. Wow. First time I've heard him speak, or is it? I think I may have heard him at the Combine, but one thing I do like to definitely do is not only see them play, not only read their story, but definitely hear them speak, so that's cool. Um, you know, we had our weight room records down in the wall, in the hallway. Um, we walk by every day, you know, go to the weight room, go to practice, um, and it was always on my mind, you know. Um, I remember I got there and you know a lot of people were telling me that it was like oh that that'll never be broken, um, and it just gave me something to shoot for you know and then that day was pretty was pretty special you know I walked into the in the facility and guys were asking me you know what I was gonna have on the bar you know how much how much I was gonna do um, and I really didn't I really had no idea um, and I remember getting in the lawyer and the coach go oh, grab my my left card from me and he, he wrote down 450 on it um, so it's pretty much you know. Just had to, had to strap up and, and, and get after it. Fuck. Four fifty. Right now, you're, you're, you're can hardly even deadlift that. Going totally nuts, and that must have been a heck of a feeling. Tristan Wirfs here uh, on the Rich Eisen show. What's you? What has your um, process been like? No pro day, and obviously there will be no face-to-face -face visits. Uh, how, how often are you? I guess zooming, teleconferencing with teams right now. Yeah, so I've had, a couple, I've had th three or four phone calls, um, and I had my first Zoom one. Um, See, this is that's pretty interesting because, I mean, the combine happened before all the shit went down, right? Before everyone went into isolation and lockdown. So for these guys to actually have the combine 
properly, which was really good and lucky, but then probably, you know, one of the most important, most stressful times for these players and also the coaches is from the time of the combine to um, draft day and everything was completely locked down for that entire period. So I don't know how they did it, but they've done a great job. Um, I got a lot more scheduled, you know, a lot more scheduled in, in the coming in the coming weeks. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely different. Um, very, very weird times. Not, you know, not having the pro day and and not being around, you know, my teammates training with them and everything. Um, but, you know, just trying to stay as close to you know as I can. Um, there's a little gym in, in Iowa City where you know they let me come in and train. Uh, so so that's been that's been real nice. Um, you know, just trying to trying to keep up, you know, um, the routine like we had. At, you know, when we were training with Coach Doyle, you know, he sent us our he sent us lift cards like just through text so we could you know keep doing what we we're doing. Which but, yeah, it's been different. Which teams have you spoken to, Tristan? Uh, the Buccaneers. I had uh, the Buccaneers. I had a Zoom call with. Um, I had a FaceTime with the Patriots. Um, I had a call with the Ravens. Um, a call with the with the Chargers and Dolphins. Um, and then I got the Browns, the Cardinals, um, and the Falcons coming up next week. Okay. Well, I wanted to he hear the story behind that that uh, that lift. It seems like there's a photo of it, but no video. So anyway, he talked to so many teams. He, he actually mentioned the uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers was the first team that he mentioned. So that was probably the one that was the most serious, and lo and behold, was the one that drafted him. So if we go back and we look at, I want to see a film study because he's an offensive tackle. We're not going to see a huge amount of, you know, crazy highlights, but I do want to see what he's good at and why. You know what I mean? So with that in mind, we're going to have a look at Voc Lombardi. Now, I have no affiliation with Voc Lombardi. Um, I found him in the previous video. He seems to know what he's talking about when it comes to offensive linemen. So I'm going to give him another shot. This is going to be my reaction to Tristan Wirth's college football film study. Now we're going to see this guy move. He ran a 4.86 40 yard dash. Ridiculous. We ain't got some film on Tristan Wirfs. What's up, y'all? Oh, shit, y'all. We're watching Tristan Shit, Wirfs. baby. You would know that if you were listening or you had your thinking cap on. Um, he is my tackle number four, guard number one. Okay? Some people think that guards are less inferior players than, than tackles, and that's not necessarily true. Um, they're, they, they're both different. They do to, two totally different things, kind of, sort of. Um, guards are more responsible for inside, and inside things happen faster than outside things. Outside things are, you know, we're responsible for, you know, our left foot to the sideline. That's the entire C-gap, unless the tight end, you know, comes in there and make a D-gap. But at this point, we have a lot more room to read and react, and there's a lot more room to make mistakes when we're talking about tackles here. Look at look at how 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 close 68 is to 54. Then look at the distance from 77 to you know Yatir Gross Gross models right here, right? So it's just you know, can you operate in different scenarios? Probably need to be just as big, just as heavy, just a slight bit more mobile. I think Tristan Wirfs operates better when he gets to be reactionary, big, strong, kind of quick dude, right? I don't want him outside in some footwork match with a super twitchy, you know, pass rushy gangster guy. I don't want that. I would rather him being inside mauling people. Um, now, can he develop and be a good outside player? Can you know? Can he get some coaching? And can he be the future of tackle one day? Possibly. He actually has some Iowa film of him playing left tackle, but we're not gonna watch that today because I encourage y'all to watch film on your own damn self, right? But um, I think Tristan Wirfs can come in and help you day one as a guard, and he could be a day one tackle too, but he'll be a better guard. Let's run for the cardio. Um, now let's talk about him as a as a run blocker, right? Big powerful dude. I think he's good with his feet in the run game in terms of he can get to his landmarks. Whether it's run game or passing game, Tristan Wirfs can always get to his landmarks. Okay? We just got to talk about some of the things that he do when he gets to those landmarks. You know what I mean? I want him to sustain blocks a little better, right? Um, to not just kind of let guys go after you block them. Take a look at this play. For example, Tristan Wirfs right here. He's gonna come off the ball and get a pretty good start on this guy. He, you know, pretty good movement, pretty good engagement. He's lined up at a two. So Tristan Wirfs did some pretty good traveling to get there, but 
he didn't do everything to continue this block here. He didn't necessarily get his head all the way on the other side of the shoulder there. He didn't fight to reestablish those hands inside of the chest plate. He kind of got his back right here, right? Tristan Wirtz got his right hand on the back of the tackle here. Let me rewind it. And you see his, his right hand just ends up on his on the uh, back of this tackle here. We want you to get more play side of that guy so you can fully cut him off, Tristan Wirtz. But he didn't do that. Right. So you want two hands on the front rather than one at the front, one at the back. Play, but what if this was a gangster on the next level? What if this was like Jan Reed? My God, this is synchronized swimming. Now, 55 didn't make the play, but what if this was a gangster on the next level? What if this was like Jan Reed or Aaron Donald or something? And you just Look how they move. That is... Why am I doing the film study? Finish that block Sorry. and let that dude <laughs> All these things matter. Um, but besides that, though, hey... <laughs> He's a, he is a pretty good initial blocker, but if you can teach him to finish, you can teach him to, you know, get his head on the right side, man, he'll be just fine. Talking about his movement, take a look at Tristan Wirtz right here. I love this. We're on the goal line. We zone stepping to the left. Cover the old boy up. I love this. He's, he's going to cover number 18. Bop, bop, bop. Good step. Get to the outside. He's going to dip and rip that arm. He's just going to cut 18 all the way off. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. He ain't getting through there. However... I, I, I kind of would have liked you to finish. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we just kind of got in front of him, cut him off, and let him go. We don't know what that cutback lane would have, you know, was like because, to be fair, Gross Matos tore it up up front. Now, honestly, he tore it up, and he forced the running back to kind of cut back a little bit. What if the running back cuts back and runs into your guy? Tristan works. You see what I mean? I don't mind this because this is actually O-line technique. You know what I mean? Just just kind of rip your arm just to, you know, keep in front of them. I don't mind the actual technique that you use. I just want you to, after you rip in front of them, square back up and finish it. And another... Well, let's say that Gross Matos didn't make it through. I don't mind this because this is... Right? Let's say he didn't. Let's say he's blocked here. Okay, so this line is still solid. Right? The running back gets it actually O-line technique, you know what I mean? Just the running back gets it and runs to the left. Tristan Wirfs is running to the left. Everyone's running to the left. He thinks. I guess he thinks. He does, definitely doesn't think that, you know, the line's going to be split by a, a, um, a blitzer. But how easily did he actually get like through there? Because to be fair, Gross Matos tore it up. Of Way too easily. He took one step to the left. The would have, you know, was like because to be fair... Gross Matos tore it up up front. Yeah, we, yeah. well, shit. They just let him through, didn't they? Honestly, he tore it up, and he forced the running back to kind of cut back a little. I'll keep in front of him. I don't mind the action. You know, Tristan Wirfs being a, a lineman, right, being close to the line there, knowing that his running back's going to be behind the line somewhere, he really should have continued, you know, I guess continued with the contact on that guy and, and probably tried to at least hold him up or drive him into the ground because... Or, you know, try and push him back behind the, uh, the the end zone line. Because at the end of the day, that running back is going to be up the lineman's ass. And if you're over that line and the running back's right behind you, well, it's going to be a touchdown. But if you don't actually make it over that line, you don't push your guy over that line, you're not doing your job, you know, as well as, as, as I guess, what you could have. Maybe. <laughs> These guys would squash me like a fucking pancake. Use. I just want you to, after you rip in front of them, Square back up and finish him. And another example, Tristan works here. Boom. Good movement. We're going to start good. But 42 never got a chance to come off because Tristan Worth never overtook this, this block properly, right? What we want to happen in this combo scenario, we're comboing, I think. Yeah, okay, cool. We're comboing, yeah. 74 and 42 are comboing this defensive end to 38, right? So... We're taking them, taking them. What 42 needs is for Tristan Wirfs to... Fuck, imagine, imagine that, imagine that. Just being literally taken back. Being like, fucking hell, these two guys, one on each side. They've got control of me. I can't do shit. <laughs> what a feeling. What a humbling feeling that would be. Cover him up. He needs to run those feet a little bit more to get on the shoulder that 42 is on. That's to Tristan's right. That's to the defender's left, right? We need Tristan Wirfs to get on the outside shoulder so 42 can be free to move on to his next block. But 42 can't leave this block because Tristan Wirfs never really fully overtook him. You see what I mean? If 42 leaves and Tristan Wirfs don't overtake, then, you know, then the end just comes off and make a tackle on number 10 right here. We don't want that. You know what I mean? Just small little stuff like that.
So Tristan Wirfs is a solid pass blocker. Um, he has the ability to travel really well and to get wherever. See, now that's for a run play, right? Where you're, you're meeting the defense. Whereas right? for a pass protection, he's going to be coming back. Good, though, right? he's gonna like that. Okay. And that's probably where he, not perfect, but it's cool. where he would be um, better. Pretty good length there, right? Check out the length on the arms, man. That's going to help him a lot in the, in the, uh, in the uh, National Football League there, being able to have arm length to get hands on guys before they get hands on you. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't have a problem with this block. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Uh, what about here? Right? Same thing. I think if he can get his hands on you first, he can kind of have a good gauge of where you at. Like I said, the technique here ain't perfect. Right? Kind of get the shoulders over the toes a little bit. I hate it. I kind of want that head back a little bit more. Get that I'm watching the running back. back. <laughs> he blocks him enough to do his job. Let's see what happens here. Hey, the Sorry, guys. Guy. I'm fucking watching the wrong guy. Blocks him enough to do his job. Let's see what happens here. It's all right. Hey, the length kind of saved them again. Whew. Every now and then this happens though. <laughs> and when I say every now and then, you know, it, it this this happens a lot. Take a look at Tristan Wirfs and what happens to him right here. Oh boy, Penn State noticed. What the hell the referee doing? Get out the way. See that what you get? That's that that's what you get. Trying to be a linebacker again. Trying to live vicariously through these young Penn State gangsters. See what I mean? Get out the way. Anyway, um, Tristan Wirfs, right? Travel, 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 travel. Oh, now what? What happens when something that I'm His not feet got set. happens? What happens when I have to react? What happens when things he kind, did of, all right. kind of go off script and I'm not just in a in a, a wrestling match anymore? I have to pick the correct technique, the right steps, the right trap cards. What happens when I have to do that? Think bad things kind of happen for Tristan worse in that way, which is kind of why I wish he was on the inside. See, this don't happen on the inside, right? If this was inside, mm. it's a lot less space between Tristan and where his right tackle would be, right? You see what I mean? It's, if it's in the inside, you want to do a whole bunch of movement, things just kind of get washed down. Bro, that's right, man. People just don't get in. People just don't get in through the uh, through the guard and the tackle. They're more so likely to, to either go around the tackle or try and make a move on the tackle but you know further away from the guard so you've got that room to try and move around him to see but who look at how far first of all we lunging right here we look at how far he is over his toes we're not powerful right there. no we're no not way powerful like this at all not at I all mean, but he does he I does shut it down straight and lean i mean at the end of the day he doesn't want that quarterback to get hit so he does he does all right he, he at least you know uses his weight to his advantage but could have been a lot more solid. That ain't good for business, my guy. The YouTube Illuminati is taking and eh. subscribing to my school. That means more questions for future. That's Patreon. 129 Let's fucking see what Patreons. Let's see Yeter Rosmatos right here. Let's see. And you know, after a while, Penn State just understood that 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 Tristan Wirtz had a problem with, you know, gap exchanges and Ooh. movements and slants. And, and at the end of the game, they did nothing but that towards the end. And what happens here, right? Gonna get a little bit of a lean. Our hands are gonna be late. Ugh. That's some big he's boys. Because he overextended right there. Take a look at him. See? Look at the whole line. The whole fucking line for Iowa. It seems to be just as big as Tristan Wirfs. See how he just kind of gets off balance right there, and he, and, he, and he can't get back inside. Now, what I want Tristan Wirfs to do, and you know maybe uh you know because you gotta see things for your brain to register for your body to do it. It starts with your eyes. So if Tristan is going to kick, 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 we want for him to do is when Gross Matos goes back inside, we want him to pound his post foot. That's his left foot, his up foot or whatever, right? We want him to pound that thing back inside. That'll keep him square. It'll keep him balanced. And, you know, it'll it'll keep him honest to his to his technique. What I mean by honest to his technique. If you um if he drops this right foot and he misses then he's off balance. He's off balance anyway. See how he dropped his right foot right there and he missed? Mm. And then he gets off balance. But if he keeps his post foot up, that's his power foot. His his left foot is his power side. So if Gross Matos crosses his face and ends up on worse power side, he's cool. Because I got power there. My post foot is up. My post foot is stuck in the ground. So it's... Yeah. It's cool. But... <laughs> you drop your post foot and you leaning and you guessing bad things happen to Tristan Wirfs here 
like I said, man, Penn State realized Tristan Wirtz did bad with, with movement in front of him. And, oh, boy, before you know it, they just started doing all kinds of stunts to get Tristan Wirtz about to pay. <laughs> and it kept working. I think Penn State won this game because they could. Fuck, he still went number 11 in the draft. <laughs> they couldn't deal with the stunts up front. Oh, boy, Tristan Wirtz. And, and you know what? That probably it, it comes from, um, you know, Tristan not trusting his, his hands and his feet, right? We'll see what the um, we'll see what the Jets coaches can can develop in this guy's game. I mean, at the end of the day, if there's certain things that God um, gifts you uh, that that certain other people just don't have, and and you know we can see what those God-given gifts are. They just need to be developed a little bit. Right? Because if he did, he'll be a lot more patient. You know, um, if you're an offensive lineman and you don't trust the hands and your feet, you say, okay, cool, I'm just gonna use power. Put hands on you, grab you, and I ain't gotta read or react. But Tristan Wirtz, sometimes you gotta read and react. This is a situation where you gotta read and react. Boom, 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 kick. When you see 49 crossing face, don't attack 49 crossing face. Because if you do, your shoulders get turned. See Tristan Wirtz's shoulders get turned? 11 get to run free. 11 get to run free now. Because you turn your shoulders because you overreacted to 49. What you do is you kick, kick, kick. Well, he didn't kick, see. Kick. He's, he's not seeing 11 come across, though, is he? He thinks. Yeah. He thinks 49's the only guy he needs to worry about. Your left hand is going to be free. But he's going to pass along across your face. Now. He did. He, he, he had a good power step. He had a good sideways, sideways power step for that. Tristan worse. You pass him along. Stay square. But you keep your right hand free now. Now that your right hand is free, you're able to react past 49 along and then engage with 11. But that didn't happen because you turned your shoulders. See what I mean? They just kept doing it. <laughs> Boy, Penn State just kept doing it. Same thing. Take a look at Tristan's left foot right here, right? We talk about left foot. We talk about post foot. You want to keep that foot up. That's your power foot. You travel with the other one. Tristan is going to travel, travel. 18 is going to cross face. He's going to drop Oof. his post foot. Now we got to guess. Now we off balance. Now we trying to strike. Now we leaning. And now 97. And now 97's coming back around again. Now we leaning. And now 97 get the run free. And your quarterback cussing somebody out. <laughs> See what I mean? Oh. So it's a lot of technical stuff that you got to deal with, man. And and, I, and I, I, I'll tell you what. Chatbots, I know y'all know this because y'all got all the answers. The infamous Google. Can somebody tell me how long Tristan Wirfs been starting at tackle? Because reps can fix reps can fix this. The more he plays right tackle, the more he'll relax and the more he'll see things quicker and he'll slow things down a little bit. But if he's outside and he's reactive, and that happens, <laughs> oh man, Tristan would be good. Cool. Tristan would be cool though. Tristan would be cool. We got another play. Get that out of there. We got another play. What happened? Let's see what happens on this play. Oh no! Same thing, man. Same thing. Moving on. Um, Hang on. On this play. Yeah, but what? I mean, what could you do? What could you do? They're running a screen. Same thing, man. Same thing. Moving on. Hang on. Okay, so it's one on one at this point. Eighteen is cutting on the inside. What? I mean, what could he have? What could he have done? He could have. Oh, he had to. Be, well, he had to completely let him go. Cool. We got another play. Get out of there. We got another play. What happened? Let's see what happens on this play. What's happening? Same thing, man. Same thing. Moving on. Um, it comes with reps, man. It comes with reps. It comes with time. And the more Tristan Wirfs plays, the better he'll be. Now, what makes him better than the next tier of guys um, is I think Tristan can do it. I think Tristan can do it, and he does have the tools to do it. You know, you look at the, the, the next few guys, in my opinion. I said Tristan is my offensive tackle four. So the next two guys would be Austin Jackson and uh, Josh Jones. Austin from USC, Josh Jones from Houston or whatever. Interesting. What makes Tristan different? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop that there because both of those names I did not recognize. He's not really rating the other two offensive tackles um, drafted above Tristan Wirfs. But I do. But I guess that's based on... They're God-given gifts, you know, they're God-given talents, which is the size, the speed, the strength. And, you know, with, without that, you know, there, there is no hope. But with that, there certainly is. And after going 13th pick of the 2020 draft to the team that uh, the GOAT, Tom Brady, is going to be playing at. I don't actually know any of the offensive linemen from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but I'm sure I will. 
I feel like Tristan Wirth, he's just going to lap it all up. He's, like I said, he's got the gifts. Now it's time to coach them. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. If you have enjoyed, please hit that like button. If you want to subscribe, do that too. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.